Hello, Beacon Tree families and students. I'm going to be reading chapter 18 of Almost Super. I hope you've been enjoying the story. Chapter 18, it's the only day of the year we get to eat caramel. I stood in Callahan Park, my bike leaning against a tree. Benny sat on his bike, his feet planted on the ground. He had a backpack slung over his shoulders. He insisted on bringing some necessities just in case. He had duct tape, rope, and a flashlight. Superhero essentials, he said. I paced in front of the tree, trying to straighten things out in my mind. There's Juanita, Benny said. Whoa, she can ride pretty fast. Juanita rode like an invisible, like an invisible Aunt Verna was chasing her. She jerked the bike from side to side as she pedaled. When Juanita got within 10 feet of Benny and me, she jumped off her bike, threw her helmet to the ground, and tackled me. In another second, she was sitting on my chest and had both of my arms pinned on the ground with her knees. It wasn't quite the greeting I expected. What did you do to my family, Juanita yelled. She brought up her fist. Tell me or you're about to meet my two good friends, pain and suffering. I don't do my best thinking when somebody is threatening me with my bodily with bodily harm. Juanita, I said in a weak voice, weak because I found it difficult to breathe with her sitting on my chest. What are you talking about? Juanita grabbed me by my front by the front of my coat and brought her face close to mine. Don't you lie to me, rather rafter Bailey, she said. She spit over her left shoulder and then pushed her face back into mine. I bring you into our headquarters. I trust you you. But then tonight I got a text message from your family asking who would save the day if there were no more heroes. <clears throat> then there's a flash of light and my dad was a worthless power. She let go of my coat and I fell back to the frozen dirt. Do you mean the light? Oscar Redding, the dentist, October J, the puzzle pieces in my mind shifted and moved and then fell into place. And just like that, I had the answer. Juanita, I said, get off me. She didn't move. Please, I said. She must have heard the desperation in my voice. She stood and I got up. You don't look so good, Rafter, Benny said. You look like you need a Benny bag. Benny, I said, still gasping for air. You know how Uncle Ralph hauls his family off for dentist appointments in November and April, right? Yeah, said Benny. He says the best time to get a teeth cleaning is after Halloween and after the tax day caramel fest. The tax day what? Juanita asked. It's the only day of the year we get to eat caramel, Benny exclaimed. That's not important, I said. Benny, do you remember back in the school library? You were talking about the battle of the thermal underwear factory? Oscar Redding's factory? We beat the Johnsons even though Uncle Henry and his family were at the dentist. That means we fought the battle in November. Don't you see what that means? I stopped and looked at my brother and Juanita. They returned my stares and blank looks. Oscar Redding didn't call for an end to the battles because he destroyed his factory. I exclaimed, he called an end to the battles before we destroyed it. Oh, I see, Penny paused and then said, wait. No, I didn't. I looked at Juanita. She shrugged. I'm lost too. It was so clear in my mind. Oscar Redding tried all last summer to get the families together, to get us to sit down and work out our differences. He's a powerful man. And maybe people started listening. Maybe people out there are a little tired of us destroying their property or arresting them for silly things. And what happens next? I answered my own question. Somebody destroys his factory. It wasn't somebody, Benny said. It was us. I shook my head. No. Somebody called up our family and told us the Johnsons were smuggling weapons into the country. I pointed at Juanita. And then somebody called up your family and told you we were building a laser. Whoever that somebody was, they used us like a guided missile to destroy Oscar Redding's factory. Juanita gasped. She saw it. I am so lost, Benny said. You're going to have to spell it out for me. Somebody wanted to stop Oscar Redding, Juanita said. Just like they've stopped the mayor and the governor, and who knows who else. They don't want peace between the families. Right, I said. They probably threatened him. They told him if he didn't stop, something bad would happen. Oscar Redding didn't look, didn't back down, so they destroyed his factory. The same person probably threatened anyone who calls for peace between the families. Benny looked confused. But who would do something like that? The same person who has gone to so much trouble to keep us fighting in the first place, I said. The same person who wants to keep us busy so he can do whatever he wants. Benny's eyes got wide and he leaned in close. Is it the librarian? 
I've always suspected that guy. Mr. Wells? I had no idea where Benny came up with that one. No, it's not the librarian. Then who? Benny asked. Juanita spoke before I could. I thought I heard the same hint of fear in her voice as I felt in my stomach. A supervillain, she said. The real supervillain? I nodded. Rodney tracked down a name. October J. I'll bet my super suit that... You can't bet your super suit, Benny said. You don't have one yet, and neither do my family. Juanita screamed. She pulled out her phone. What is it? I asked. My dad got a phone call after he lost his power. Juanita said she finished typing on the phone and held it to her ear. My entire family left to go to the stadium to fight with your family. I don't understand. I started, and then I did. All of the superheroes in the city gathered together in one place without powers. I pulled out my phone just as I heard Juanita talking into hers. I dialed Dad's number, and after what seemed like three incredibly long rings, Dad answered, Rafter, is that you? Dad, you can't go to the stadium. What are you talking about? We're almost there, Dad. It's a trap. It doesn't matter, Dad said. Somebody has to stand up to the Johnsons. With or without powers, it's going to be the Baileys. For once in my life, I wish my dad wasn't so super. I heard Juanita say, first into the phone. Dad, the Johnsons aren't going to the stadium anymore. They're going to the first dam. How do you know? Dad asked. There isn't any time to explain, Dad. You must have to believe me. I looked at Juanita, who had already hung up. She stood and nodded. I spoke to the phone. The Johnsons are headed there. There was a pause. Rafter, are you sure? Yes, Dad, I am sure. There was static on the other end of the line, and I could almost hear Dad trying to decide. Okay, we'll head over there now. Thanks for the heads up, Rafter. Good work. I left out a sigh and hung up the phone. I opened the Bailey Family Locator app, and Dad was true to his word. One by one, the dots that represented the members of the family were turning towards the east, towards the canyon, and the first dam. I closed the phone and said to Juanita, that was good thinking. Juanita put her helmet on and picked up her bike. Thanks, she said. Wait, I said. What are you going? Where are you going? Home, Juanita said. Our families are safe, at least for now. When my dad gets home, I'll tell him about the supervillain. I chose my next words very carefully. Juanita, somewhere out there is a real supervillain. This supervillain stole our powers along with the rest of our families. If we can find him, we could get our powers back, our real powers. Juanita stared at me. You want me to ride out into the night and fight with a supervillain, with the two of you? The way she said it did make it sound a little silly. I don't know that you'll have to actually fight him, I said, but if we can find the proof that he's out there, we'd still need your help to convince your family. Then maybe both of our families could team up. Juanita just stood there atop her bike. I was looking out of the window when the light flashed, and I said, at the beginning, there was this ball of lightning, I can't be sure, but it looked to me like it might be close to the city dump or even in the city dump. Juanita sighed, her shoulders slumped, and it looked like she just ran a marathon. Listen, I think it's great you guys want to be super. I really do, but I don't want to do, I don't want anything to do with this. I never wanted to be super. Your mother saved the lives of three people, and I, will, I wanted to say, I'm not asking you to be super, I said, but right now there are people in trouble. Your family, my family, and if all the superheroes lose their powers, this supervillain will be able to do anything. Innocent citizens could be in danger. People could get hurt. Juanita looked at the ground. Her hair, her hair was covered, had covered her face, so I couldn't see it. I waited. We could really use your help, Benny said. Juanita didn't move. I saw the sharp point of a crescent moon rising above the mountain behind her. Somewhere, a piece of frozen snow broke loose from a branch and fell to the ground. Juanita raised her head. I'll come, she said, because people are in danger. I nodded. Thanks, Juanita. Benny tightened his helmet. Enough with the speeches, he said, his voice giddy. It's time for action. With that, Benny was off. I grabbed my bike and followed Juanita and brought her up the rear. I thought what went, a thought went through my mind, one that sent a tingle up my spine. Somewhere out there, a villain had set a plan into motion. He had been manipulating my family for years, and now he probably thought he was stealing candy from a baby. But pedaling through the dark, blowing puffs that hot breath into the night air, three superheroes were about to fight back. And that is the end of Chapter 18. Thank you for listening with me.